episode 354 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering. Whether you're sitting at home, jamming arena, you're around the kitchen table with your friends, or you're heading out to your local game store for some Friday Night Magic. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And we have a very exciting and very special show for everybody today. Yes, we do. <laughs> I'm so excited for it, Megan. This is two weeks in a row yeah. that we have been... We have been off the regular good luck high five train yep. on a separate, different train. It's been a that's great more train. more exciting and goes faster. Yeah, this tr these trains we've been on have been superb. They've got sleeper cars. There's been a yes. murder, and we're trying to solve it. Yes. Uh, it's very, very exciting. The classic Agatha Christie train. Oh, my dream, yeah. dream train situation. But also they're high speed. Because there's nothing I want more than a high-speed train to take me places. I am so on board with that idea. On I board, know. like I, I'm on board like a train. Like you would be on board a train. Yeah, exactly. Anyways. What we're trying to say is we have another special guest this week. Yes, we do. So if you're watching the video, you're, you're like, obviously. You know um, who it you is. You know who it is. But if you're listening, you don't know yet, and we're going to keep you in suspense. That's right, just for a minute longer. But. And to tease you, we're going to talk a lot about Throne of Eldraine. We're going to talk about magic design. Yep. We're going to talk about uh, cool, like, life stuff. <laughs> we're going to play some flavor text theater movie pitches. That's right. With some Throne of Eldraine cards. Yeah, it's going to be pretty sweet. It's going to be a very good time. But before we start the show, a big thank you to everybody who's a supporter of ours on Patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. That's right. Thank you so much. Um, whether you have recently become a supporter or you've been supporting us the whole ding-dang time, we appreciate it so, so much. Um, it means the world to us. It keeps us going. We'll have some more hangouts in November for yeah. some challenges um, that you can play us on Magic Online or Magic Arena or Magic or Online, Magic honestly, Online. Yeah. your pick, um, and uh, have our also special patron hangout where you can play Pictionary or, you know, just hang out with us just while chill. we stream, but only patrons. So yeah, head on over and become a patron and join our lovely high-fiving family if you haven't yet. Big thank you as well to Card Kingdom slash Good Luck High Five. Just kidding, that's not the link. It's cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. That's right. It's shorter to type, so yeah. now you can go type it in right now. I know. We wanted to make your fingers not have to work a lot. Exactly. We were teasing you. This is how much they could be working. This is how much they're actually yeah. working. It's Four letters. <laughs> great. It's a great company. We're so happy to have them as a sponsor. Yes. Buy anything you need for your magical life. Their, their shipping is super fast. They've got a great blog uh, with tons of really neat articles to read. They do good in the community. Uh, the chalice happened, you know, I don't know at no, what point in your no, life. Two, two weeks, a week ago? <laughs> yeah, because we're recording we this in advance. Okay. So. <laughs> Some time ago. That's evidence of how wonderful they are. Um, and they support other great podcasts and content creators, too, which yeah. I think is really awesome. It is. So if you like us and other people like us, support Card Kingdom and go over there and use our affiliate link to buy whatever you want. You can ask for a free Megan and Maria token or sticker in your order as well because that's just how cool they are. Yeah. Anyway, choo-choo. Let's start this trade. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's time for the main meat and potatoes of our show, or if you're vegetarian, the green beans and carrots. And we welcome our special guest, Mark Wineswater. <laughs> Yay! How is vegetarian going to me? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> Are you a meat eater? I'm very much a meat eater. What is what, what's, your... the, what's the opposite of a vegetarian? Uh, like, I mostly eat meat. A meatitarian. <laughs> meatitarian. Yeah, yeah. What is your meat of choice? Uh, probably ham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an out say, of the blue choice. Yeah, I wasn't expecting ham. No. Ham is awesome. I mean, ham is great. I think, I don't know how many people I've heard just name ham. No, I've, I would, my mind is steak, and I like yeah. go to bat for steak all day. But I, I'm not anti steak, but I mean, <laughs> it's no ham. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Wow. <laughs> Fighting words. Wow. Fighting words. I just want to go back to how Maria thinks that the vegetarian <laughs> equivalent of meat and potatoes is green beans and carrots. Yeah. Maria, you are spreading, spreading some anti vegetarian propaganda okay. by making people think that that is what they eat. You, okay, you. It's you like an it. impossible burger yes. and, and potatoes. Oh, there okay. You go. okay, that's yeah. true. That's true. I've heard impossible burgers are very good as well. They're very good. Okay. They're like, they're kind of creepy. It's like weird. I don't know how they're doing how it. How close it is to meat? Yeah. Anyway. Is it possible it just is meat? Or that, that's, my, that's my whole theory. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak to that. But yeah, we're super excited to have Mark Rosewater. It's your second time coming on the show. It is. 
I, I, I'm excited. Yeah. Now I, I, I first time I didn't know what to expect, but now I know what to expect. Yeah, so. like stuff like what just happened. Yes. Yes. That yeah, whole yes. conversation. Like the whole, yeah. Well, like train conversations. I know that will happen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. Yep, that's a staple of Good Luck High Five. Actually, is train talk. Oh, and I learned you guys aren't in a car. I'm used to all my podcasts being in a car. So. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you know that you could record a podcast from outside a car? I didn't. Yeah. Like, we're not moving. No, how, do you, how does I know, it work? I know. It's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. The technology exists to wow. not record, to record podcasts in cars. I'm, I'm amazed. Besides I'm amazed. a car, yeah. And there's a camera. I'm not used to that I either. Know. Yeah, so. hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, what is your title here, uh, just for people who don't know who you are and, you know, for some reason? <laughs> uh, I'm the head designer for Magic. Uh, I've been the head designer since 2003. Wow. wow. So, so over half of Magic's life. And oh over goodness. half of your life. Not half of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so we invited you on the show today because we, you were such a delightful guest last time. We talked about the unstable. We did. Last yeah. time you were here. We did. Well, so another cool. one of my, my favorite sets coming up. So I love talking about, well, I like talking about magic sets. But this particular set I'm very excited by because it took me 10 years to get this made. Okay, Throne wait. Throne of Eldraine took what? you 10 years? Yes. Well, a, a fairy tale set took 10 years to get made. Oh, wow. So you've had this idea cooking in your brain for a decade. Yes. Okay, so why on uh, earth did it take so long? I think so, it's great. So what happened, there's the, the, the story. Okay, so we made Lorwyn. Yeah. Yes. And Lorwyn made me realize that there was, like, Lorwyn was not a fairy tale set. I know a lot of people think, like, it was the closest we'd ever come. Yeah. There were mm -hmm. fairies and giants and things, but it it was a Celtic set, right? It was based yes. on Celtic mythology. And I'm like, oh, it like made me realize that what we could do was a fairy tale set. Yeah. And I pitched the idea of the fairy tale set and to resounding like silence. Like, like really? I, I go, imagine this, a fairy tale set, and they're like, what else you got? No and way. I, yes. And I, I pitched it many, many times. <laughs> and I, like, I, I, I would always like try to pitch a little bit different. And then like they're always like, is this the fairy tale set again? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, so eventually what happened was we had a, a special meeting where um, we were trying to figure out the upcoming sets and anybody could pitch. They had 10 minutes to pitch any world you wanted. Oh, why didn't you and call me? And you made a little me? slideshow. We well, had to work here. But oh, okay. You had to have a slideshow. Sure. Okay, so I pitch fairy tale. I, I, I did all these pictures. It's a whole big presentation, like and a real slideshow. A real like, nice I want to I want to bring it to life. <laughs> so I pitch this and they're like, like, Crickets chirping. They're like, okay, next. And then Sean Main gets up and he goes, Arthurian legend set. And they're like, that's amazing. We got to make that. And I'm like, how about the. Okay, so anyway, so I go to, to Aaron, my yeah, boss, Aaron yeah. Forsyth. And Aaron's asked me what I think of the Camelot set. And I said, I think it's a great idea for a set, but it's, there's not enough. Like, we have done high fantasy magic before, like Dominaria, Dominaria. did it, Alara did it. We've yeah. done that. In a vacuum, you know what I'm saying, it, it, there's not enough. It's like, look, we're doing a world with knights, and there aren't horses, and yeah. there's castles. Like, it, that's not enough to be unique. You're like, so, knights, we've never done that in magic. Right. So I said, <laughs> I, I, know, I know of something that fits perfectly in a world of castles, nice. of, of yeah. princes and princesses. Imagine this. Fairy tales. <laughs> so and you just slid, you're like a rider yeah. on a bill in the so, Senate. So, right, yeah. so what happened was, I said, well, we can combine them and we can make a set and it could fill, it could fill in the pieces that one's missing. Yeah. And, and, and Aaron, Aaron goes, okay, I get buy off. And then, just keep making the fairy tale part bigger. And then when I hand it off, I'm like, guys, the fairy tales are what's exciting. And then I finally convinced them the fairy tales. But anyway, it took a long wow. time. Wow. So, so, anyway, I'm glad you guys like it because. If you guys, if the audience did not like this, it would be bad for me because I've been pushing so hard to get this made. <laughs> I imagine you're kind so. of like it. It was like a Trojan horse every time that you were building. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, okay, let me tell you. Inside is a fairy tale set, though. <laughs> but inside, a fairy tale happens. Uh, on the surface, it's dinosaurs and pirates, but inside, it's fairy tale. Like, <laughs> so we'll stick with the dinosaurs and the pirates. Well, I'm so happy you got uh, your wish finally yes. because yeah. I love Throne of Eldraine. I yep. think it's definitely. I made my it for you. Oh, thank you. It's my favorite flavor since I've been playing Magic, hands down. So. Um, I, I'm also a huge fan of Arthurian literature, so yes. it's like basically got that too. the confluence <laughs> of all the things that I would wish for in a set, besides going to the Blind Eternity, which we, we fight about all the time <laughs> on the internet. It's not a place. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it a place? It's not That's a place. That's my argument. <laughs> isn't, isn't by It's definition. like a membrane, maybe? It's... <laughs> 
I would love a really... set in a membrane, please. Oh. So, um, by the way, here's the, th the our threading legend. I have to bring this up. Oh yeah. So one of the problems we found was um, we always try to test things to figure out how deep we can go. Okay. So Arthurian legend, there's a lot of Arthurian legend. There's very deep you can go. But what we found was you got you didn't get very deep before people were like, I have no idea what you're talking about. For example, yeah. the Green Knight, nobody knows. Really? Go nobody away. knows. The Green Knight? The Green Knight, which for those who know Arthurian legend, it's a pretty big thing in Arthurian legend. Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm not going very deep. Here's how it went. It's like, do you know Excalibur? Yes. Yep. <laughs> do you know King Arthur? Yes. Do you know Lady of the Lake? I kind of heard of Lady of the Lake. Yeah. Do you know the Black Knight? Look, I've seen Monty Python. Do you know the Green Knight? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Wow, <laughs> like, like, the drop off is the drop strong. off so fast. Uh, and fairy tales, we find the exact opposite thing, which is like you could pick up like the minute thing, you know, with like how about the the golden goose that Jack steals when he oh yeah the golden goose of course who doesn't know the golden goose yeah you know so and wow. so we're all that familiar was with the golden goose we've met the golden goose yeah mm -hmm. everyone knows the goose so yeah. the thing I find funny is fairy tales went super deep like people knew like the the most minute thing for fairy tales and then we tried to do the slightest thing in Arthurian and we did some of it like the questing beast most people don't know that's an Arthurian thing yeah like it's a thing like a thing like it's legendary people are like why is it legendary it's a thing <laughs> it's a singular thing tell us about the questing. <laughs> Beast. What the what did the questing beast go looking for? No, they searched for it. They were questing oh. for the thing. It was a horrible. So a lot of Arthurian legend, you know better than I, but a lot of Arthurian legend is there's these knights, and then horrible things happen, and then they have to go <laughs> stop the horrible things. Oh, classic. Lots of yeah. bad things yes. before right. almost everyone in Arthurian. So it's a beast they go questing for. Yeah. And if you go back in time, like we're used to, like modern storytelling, you know, where things are kind of happy endings. Happy endings. Yeah. You go back to like more medieval oh, times, no. things ended horribly. Well, <laughs> that's true of fairy tales. Oh yeah, fairy tales ended. So the thing I, but, um, one of the things that's very funny is, so Bill Rose is Aaron's boss, the VP of R&D. So when I'm trying to pitch Bill on this, one of his big concerns was he thought it was a little like, soft, a little juvenile. Okay. And I'm like, Bill, if you go to the source material, it is, it is as dark, dark as, darker than we would do. It is dark. Yep. Like for example, Cinderella, I believe that they gets cu cut off. Well, not only really they, they cut their feet off to fit in the shoe, yeah. but after she gets married to the prince, I believe she has birds peck out the eyes of her sisters. Yes, that is accurate. And she puts her mother in or stepmother in a barrel full of nails and rolls her down a hill. <laughs> Forgot about that part. But like I Cinderella. Yeah, I mean, for example, the, the most recent Cinderella, the whole idea of Cinderella was that kindness was her thing. Yeah, and the thing that yeah. made her stand about when she was so, she was kind. so kind. And I'm like, well, in the Grim fairy tale, she rose her mother down with a barrel full of nails. So not really a kindness thing. That's, that's a later <laughs> addition in. I, <laughs> I mean, back when it was written, that was an everyday occurrence, though. Yeah, yeah I did Everyone have. Everyone put their stuff Early in the file, barrels. I had barrel full of nails. I, I, I have barrel nails at the card. Did you but, really? But no one knew it. Like, no one knew the reference. <laughs> like, that was, that was deep. I went a little too deep there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah I was going to ask you, what things didn't make the cut? Oh, a, a bunch of things. So, like, for example, there's a bunch of other Hans Christian Anderson stories. Yeah. Like we did Little Mermaid because that's pretty famous. But like the Tin Soldier, do you know the Tin Soldier? Like the ballerina I, and the Tin Soldier. Uh, I know the song from the seventies. Well, anyway, there's a story called the ballerina and the Tin Soldier. Okay, no. And we made a ballerina and a Tin Soldier, and when we tested it, they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with it. But but so there were, we did a few deeper cuts that, and I mean, a, a few of them stuck around. Like one of the ones that stuck around is baked into a pie. Yeah. Everybody. We didn't do nursery rhymes. So everyone was like, oh, it's the nursery rhyme. Like, well, it's actually referencing there's a story where a woman kills her son and then bakes him into a pie. And that's why they can't find it because the, like, the constable's eating the pie. And Sick. I, it's dark. They're dark. dark. Um, so anyway, there, we did a few stuff like that. But the, 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 most of the things that didn't make it were just like, I had made magic beans, for example. Yeah. You know, and the magic beans that you could uh, sacrifice it to make a wall. You know, uh, that stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of, like, we tried different versions of things. It's not like the Magic Beans. I mean, there's a card that references the Magic Beans, but there's no, like, yeah. Magic Beans. Giant like, opportunity. My, my original cow was called Trading Cow, and when it entered the battlefield, you <laughs> traded it for something that the, the opponent gave you anything they had other than a land of their choice. That's oh, how, I like red. that. red. It was red originally. And I had it. Magic Beans, which which were, were not particularly powerful. They were, they were kind of... But the idea was if they had Magic Beans and you had the cows and they could give you the Magic Beans, but well, the magic beans could turn to a wall, so anyway. I like it. I like it. Um, I had a, um, I had the uh, shoemaker where the elves made shoes at oh, night. Oh, yeah. That got cut. Um, we, we had a whole, I mean, we had, we had every version you can imagine um, of, like, 
take the fairy tale. Like we tried a lot of different versions of things. I had the harp that played itself. Like Jack steals the golden goose. Yeah. He also yeah. steals the self playing harp. Yeah, I had that's that. right. Um, anyway, we had a lot of like things. Not all of the things made the cut. We had a puss in boots at one point, but uh, they decided no talking animals. And that was we, too far. Yeah. So I said, well, how about just a, a cat wearing boots? It's just a cat. It just has boots on. And a normal like, cat yeah, wearing boots. boots. Yeah. And like, I wish that's boots. what it was, the card was called. Yeah. Just a normal and, and, cat wearing boots. Like, we could just call it cat wearing boots, you know, and <laughs> they, they wouldn't go for that one. But uh, we did, we did yeah, get the I three wish. bears and the three pigs, just they're like normal bears and normal pigs. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, that's true. So, and I like Goldilocks, Goldilocks. As, a, as, a, as a bear hunter. I thought that was fun. Like I yeah. like doing, I like doing twists on things. I think that's kind of fun. Yeah, so. I think everyone enjoys the Goldilocks one, especially. Sure. Yeah. Um, question. I just can't get over this. What is? Can you give us a synopsis of the ballerina and the Tin Soldier? It's a love story. Okay. I mean, basically, they're Classic, toys. Falling they're, in love. They're with the toys that fall in love. Okay, that's what I thought. And heard. since it's hands, Christian Anderson, it ends horribly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's just his, that's his he's jam. He's tin, so he gets melted down, and she jumps into the fire. Also, so uh, maybe no, not exactly. Okay. But, uh, I like that. That's so. my that's my twist on a Hans Christian Anderson <laughs> ending. <laughs> It's funny because I think that uh, because Little Mermaid is such a thing, like the Little Mermaid, uh, the Hans Christian Andersen ends does not end well. Um, it ends kind of tragically. I mean, it is just a creepy story to begin yes. with, honestly. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, we won't. Anyway. There's anyway. A of, there's a lot of subjects there. <laughs> um, the, the one thing that was a lot of fun, the reason that I really, really enjoyed playing in the space is that it's something people know. Like when you do top down, yeah. so top down design is you build your set, um, the structure of the set is built around the thing you're making. And in order for it to work, your audience has to know it. Yes. Mm -hmm. like that's one of the tricks about top down. I can't do top down. Like, people want us to do top down stuff that people don't know. And I'm like, well, it won't work. Like, why Why is this and this in the same set together? If you don't know why, like, it makes sense in Throne Mountain because you know the fairy tales. And, like, well, why is there a wooden puppet in the same set as a mermaid? Well, okay. That's, well, yeah, that's, you, you have know. to know the like, two you have things. to know that they, yeah. they make sense together. In a vacuum, why would this mermaid that turns into a human be with this? Oh, they turn into a human. That's the theme. Was, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes um, sense. I just thought of that connection. <laughs> um, but anyway, one of the things we're looking for top down is trying to figure out how to make things work. And so the really interesting thing about this is when I made Throne of Eldraine, I was copying uh, originally Innistrad. Because Innistrad is my, my, so top down. It's yeah. a top, what I call it, genre, top down yeah. genre. It's like uh, Theros and Amenket are top down cultural. This, uh, this is a top down genre, which is. Innistrad said, okay, let's go look at movies and books and TV shows about gothic horror and like, well, what do you think of zombies? We'll go look at zombie movies or vampires or whatever. This was the same thing. Like, people know fairy tales. So here's the stat that I sold this on. The average American, when they die, will have seen 10 movies with the plot of Cinderella. And what? you can go online right now. There's a website that has all of them, and you can count. I had, I've seen 14. So. No way. What? Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway. I just Googled movies with the, <laughs> the plot, plot of Cinderella. Cinderella. Yeah, like Cinderella movies or something. I'm, I'm doing it right now. Anyway, there is, there are a whole bunch of them. And there's a whole bunch that, like, there's 14 that I know I saw, and there's a bunch that maybe I saw the one I don't remember. These um, ones are, like, pretty obvious. Yes. Like, The Princess Diaries and Ever After, A Cinderella Story, etc. Ella Enchanted. Yeah, there's just a lot of there's a lot of what yeah. website what? are you on? Ranker. Yeah, Ranker. Though. Okay, that's it's Cinderella the top movies? Cinderella's movie list of best. Cinderella but then as you go through, like, oh yeah, I've seen that oh, yeah, one. Yeah, I've seen woods. that one. Yep, oh yeah, I've seen that one. And so, and for example, there are like four movies called The Cinderella Story, which is the latest teen star, like Selena Gomez or whatever. Yeah. And it's just Cinderella, but it, okay, it's modern day Cinderella and it's Selena Gomez. And there's one for Lucy Hale and that. Uh, there's I, like a, there's a Cinderella. <laughs> That Kenneth Branagh directed? Yes, that was, they did a live action Walt Disney Cinderella. What? Yeah, last year or two years what? ago. What? It is. It's from 2015. Yeah, no I saw way. What? Kate Blanchett is in it. <laughs> She's the, is she the, 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 what? the what, stepmother? She must be. Anyway, that's wow. the, that was the movie I was talking about where, yeah. like, the whole point of the movie is, like, Cinderella's defining quality is she's so kind. That's sort of like she's yeah. forgiving and kind. Well, now I want to see a like a true to history make of Cinderella where she puts her mom <laughs> in a barrel of nails. I love yeah. that. She's just like, you know what? I'm done with this. <gasps> Look, Look, I'm I shocked. There's say, so many Cinderellas and no one's done like the gruesome version. There's another film that is in my <laughs> favorite genre of films, which is Amanda Bynes stars yep, in a contemporary remake <laughs> of a classic story. <laughs> so I need to go watch What a Girl Wants starring Amanda Bynes. And Stalin Colin Firth, by ASA. the way. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, yeah. I mean, one of the things you'll notice here is some of them are like, they call her Cinderella, and yeah. some of them are like, look, it's the Cinderella story, but you know. How is the one with Whitney Houston and Whoopi Goldberg 14th on this list? This list is <laughs> I mean, a that's scandal. my personal favorite. Exactly. So. Like, but, but if you're anyway, watching the, a classic Cinderella, that's obviously the best one. Yeah, it so, is. So, anyway, the, the, one of the points, that one of the things that I, I try to explain is these are so ingrained in our culture. Like, these are stories you just know. Everybody knows them. Like, yes. the funny thing about Arthurian is you, you just, we don't get to go that deep before people don't know it. But the, yeah. the fairy tales go so deep because you've seen so many movies with those fairy tales. It's yeah. like, oh, you know. And, and even then, like, the other thing that's funny is it's so deep that not only have you seen the movies, then there's the movies making fun of the movies. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get Shrek, and then things where yeah, I'm now making fun. I'm, I'm parodying them, yeah. you know? And it's, it's anyway, it's, there's very many layers to this. It's a very deep thing. So we got to make all sorts of references, and when we come back, which I hope we will do, we have many, many references we didn't make. I'm going to make the Shoemaker. Oh, yay. Oh, the Shoemaker was good. I was, I was mad we didn't make the shoe. <laughs> The woman who lives in the shoe, it could be a yeah. That's a house. That is a nursery rhyme. Oh yeah, that's a nursery rhyme. Sorry. Now, so maybe sorry. one day we'll do nursery rhymes. We, we didn't do nursery rhymes this time around. Yeah, because there's some creepy nursery rhymes. Oh, there like, are. why did that woman live in that shoe with all those children? She had no choice. It wasn't an option. That's yeah. all she had. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna argue that if you have the I'm means to, remember it now. to live in a giant shoe in fairy tale land, you okay, can, she you could be anything. homeless or she could live in a shoe. She was oh, lucky to have okay. a shoe. You're right. And you're right. You? You're right. Shaming her for her shoe living. No, you're right. I'm sorry. I just. Do you know what? I'm not <laughs> shaming her for her shoe living. I'm shaming the society that allows a woman with ch twelve children to, to live, live in, in a, a shoe. shoe. Okay, that's. It is without point. providing her better affordable housing options. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just go. I was starting to Google it, and I remembered the old lady who swallowed a fly nursery oh, rhyme. Yeah. Yes. That is super creepy. That is. You literally keep repeating. Maybe she's gonna die. Yeah, and yeah. as a child, you yeah. sing this. By like, the way, <laughs> it ends with her dying. Just remember. Yes, yes, yeah. Is she going to die? Is she going to die? Is she going to die? Yeah, she yes, dies. Yes, she, she dies. <laughs> but by the way, out. there are a lot of things, lullabies you sing to your children that if yeah. you stop it, like, Rockabye Baby? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, baby, any moment you could die. Have you died yet? Not yet. Oh, you fell and now you're dying. Yes, uh, you Go know, to sleep. London Bridge, that's, that's, that's yeah. creepy. Pocket full of posies. Yeah. yeah. The Black Death. Yep. Yeah. And Bill was worried that we, we, we couldn't go dark enough with fairy tales. Oh, don't worry, <laughs> Turns Bill. Turns out with nursery rhymes, you could get really messed up already. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway. I'm, I'm super happy that that you did this and that cards like uh, Ginger Brute were created, which yes. I know was kind of like the, the yes. level. Yes, oh, so the story of Ginger Brute is um, Peter Lee, who's my strong second on the set, made Ginger Brute, I mean, he was a Ginger Gollum, I think was the original name, and huh. from maybe week one, it was in the file like, almost immediately, and we loved the card. Uh, so the original card was haste and only black creatures with with haste. Mm -hmm, we, yeah. we later made it activated. It later became food when food became a thing. But originally it was just that. And we went to the creator team and they're like, we don't know. And we're like, well, we we do animated things all the time. Like we have yeah. elementals made out of name name your object. We've had elementals. Like yeah, eh, it's gingerbread. How different is that? So they're like, well, maybe. And the whole time we were just kind of like it stayed in. And then we handed off the file to set design. I'm like. Don't let them take it out. This is really good. You know, <laughs> try to fight for this. this is How awesome often are you running around the office trying to protect your babies from the axe? Well, normally I'm not. Normally I do a set, I hand it off, and I'm off doing other stuff. Yeah, right? it's true. But when I hand it off, sometimes I'll say to the person I'm handing it off to, look, look out for this particular card. Sometimes I'll say that. Um, like, for example, when I handed a set off to Sam when we did um, Ravnica Allegiance, there was a... Uh, uh, an ooze lord. And I'm like, Sam, 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 you can change it, but I need an ooze lord. Just keep the ooze lord. We all need an ooze lord. We all yeah. need an ooze lord, really. So, anyway, I figure any ooze is good news. So, um, anyway, he kept it in. I mean, he changed a little bit, but he kept it yeah. in as an ooze lord in Ravnica Legions. So, I tend to do that. Anyway, so the, the, the whole time it was on the edge, and then we decided, okay, that's that, let's keep it in. And then they're going to go make the, the um, trailer. Yeah. And the people that make the trailer go, you know what would be awesome? Gingerbread people. And you're like, yes. <laughs> and you're like, perfect. And then I'm like, those exist. Like this little card that I thought would be, maybe we'd barely squeak it in. We're like, oh, it's the face of the set. So, um, <laughs> yes. yes. And then perfect. people get mad at us, like, where's the gingerbread woman? And I'm like, we handed off the set months before that got made. Yes. We didn't know. We didn't know. Before the trailer happened. We didn't know. Oh, well, it was great. Yeah. The trailer. Great. I'm happy that that the ginger brute was there. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, 
The set turned out awesome. Absolutely. Uh, there was, I mean, uh, the other thing people don't realize is I make a set, and then two years later the set comes out, and well, I can peek my head in to see what's going on. Uh, you know, the, 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 the set design team was run first by um, Mark Gottlieb and then by Eric Lauer. They did an amazing job, the whole team. They, they, they're the ones that came up with an adventure and food. And anyway, I'm very happy with the set, so. Same. I'm, I'm super, super thrilled with it. I'm always pushing magic to be like, what if it was a little bit sillier? And yes. uh, for me, this hits the nail on the head. Yeah. Is it silly enough for you? Uh, no, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day we'll get there. Where is cat wearing boots? <laughs> okay, okay. Coming out next February, February 29th. That's my birthday. Oh, it's your birthday. Well, the 28th, so 28th. it's one day after. Um, so we have Unsanctioned. That's right. Which is a brand new Unproduct. It's a sealed product. It's like uh, th five half decks that you combine together to play with. Yeah. And there are uh, 16 brand new cards, and that... It's silly. Yes. Maria, that's going to be silly <laughs> enough for even you. I know, there's a squirrel wrestling in the art or whatever, and I was There's yes. a squirrel yes. boxing with a goblin. Yes. Perfect. Being refereed by a chicken. <laughs> that, my friends, that's how you know it's quality product. That right is silly. <laughs> that's my idea of paradise. <laughs> yes. Okay, shall I ask some of these questions? Yeah, yes. let's we go. Got it? Ask let's questions. Go do it. Okay. Um, so, uh, we have asked... questions. This isn't live. <laughs> We asked everybody to send in some questions for okay. Mark, and okay. hopefully these are ones you have then not. You gave away I was here. Before. Now they know I'm here. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? We, we were, were actually like all surprised. No one's gonna know who this guest is, and then like, well, I announced ahead of time that he's here, <laughs> and I posted that he's here, and that when I yeah. advertised that I would say he's you here. Know, the we were gonna be. We were gonna try and keep it secret for months that you were <laughs> even ever on the show. Yes, but, true. Yeah. But you know, I guess that illusion. Yeah. We was have. I could wear a bag the whole time that he's the mystery guest. Just over your head. Big grocery bag with a like smiley face. Yeah, like, yeah, who is it? Uh, okay, first question. Time. This is pretty. This is pretty broad. Okay. If you weren't working on magic, what might you be doing every day? If I weren't working on magic, well, I mean, yeah. uh, the path I was on before I became a game designer was writing for television. Yeah. yeah and so true. right now I would be. I'd have a couple hit television shows on. I'd be writing different Ooh, stuff. So you'd yeah. you already Ooh, know. You'd be question. Such a yes. Of, of all of the television shows, yeah. since you last wrote for television, yeah. which one would you have most wanted to oh, like, great be working on? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I, I leaned toward comedy, Yeah. although I love science fiction. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I actually pitched numerous times to Star Trek Next Generation, <gasps> and they never took any of my ideas, but no. I came close. One time they said we liked it, and they went to check, and they ended up not doing it. But they were I, all, they were like, "Mark, we can't do fairy tales in Star Trek." <laughs> I said, "Imagine fairy tales." No, I uh, I pitched four times to them, and one of the interesting things about pitching to Star Trek is you'll pitch something, and they'll stop you. And they, like, one of my pitches was all about here's an idea, but you don't like the show starts and things are weird. You don't know what's going on. And they're like, "Stop," and like we uh, we don't do that. I go, "You do that all the time." They go, "Well, oh, we do that. We don't want that from a pitch." Okay, here's a time travel. Stop. We, uh, we don't do time travel. You do them all the time. Well, we do them, but we don't no take pictures way. of time travel. So that I go, here's fairy so tales. Cool. <laughs> fairy tales. <laughs> like, fairy tales. <laughs> pick, they they might have taken fairy tales. Oh, fairy tales. Anyway. That so, would actually, look, I would watch a holodeck episode that's all oh, about Don't even try and tell us that you don't do that, Star Trek. We know you do yeah. that. Um, so I wouldn't have, I mean, I would have enjoyed any stuff like that. I, I mean, in general, like, I probably, the show I would have loved to write on, mm -hmm. and it, it, almost, like, there's a world where it could have happened. So I was on Roseanne in the fourth season. Mm -hmm. And the second season of Roseanne, Joss Whedon was on the, the staff. I missed him by like oh, uh, by a little over a year. You could yeah. have been BFFs. I could have been on Buffy. I could have written on Buffy. Oh, I would have, that would have been great. I would have crushed Buffy. I would have been very good on Buffy. I think that I agree that yeah, you would have crushed agree. Buffy. So, Absolutely. And then, and then I never would have done magic. And then, so anyway. Well, and what so. what world would we be living in? There's an alternate. I want, <laughs> I want everyone to imagine an alternate universe where Mark yeah. Rosewater wrote for Buffy. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, but I, was not head designer of magic. Yeah, I know that would be a very different world. Yeah. You know what? I think Buffy. But but Buffy would have some fairy tales. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Buffy would have been great with a fairy tale episode or two. Buffy is a fairy tale. Yeah, she exactly. Is. Yeah, she's true. Know? She's the Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, and, true. Uh, and the the vampire is the wolf. I, it writes itself. Yeah. See, there we go. Okay. Great, great, great. Uh, what other? Oh wait, Maria, I want I want you to answer the same question. Okay. What okay. what TV show would you want to write, have written for? Oh well, the one that I ever, that I think of, like sometimes I'm falling asleep at night and I'm like, oh, writing an episode in my head is Star Trek. Yeah. 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 I I I'm a huge Trekkie. If anybody doesn't know that, and. I think there's so many cool directions that they could go with the show and stuff that they yeah. haven't explored, et cetera, et cetera. So that's also my answer. Yeah. What about you? Probably The Good Place. 
Oh yeah, you I do. love the good place. <laughs> Classic. It's like it's like right up my alley of being very nerdy about something mm -hmm. and then also very funny. Yeah. I love it. Okay. All right, this question. That's like your Venn diagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy enough. What other games do you play, if any? I know you play board games a lot. I do, I do. So my family on Friday nights has Rosewater Game Night. We play on Friday nights. So I play a lot more, um, like, party-type games. Yeah. Like Sushi Go. Oh, yeah. Oh, we um, love Sushi Go. Yeah, so I mean, my, my, that's my family. You know, like, my son loves um, King of Tokyo. Yeah. So, so the way it works is every Friday night when we play, um, one of the kids picks a game, and then one of the parents picks a game, which is me. Um, and so uh, we always play two games. And yeah. then uh, and we play a lot of different things. And so um, Exploding Kittens or I know, yeah. we, we have a wide variety of things. And um, how, how old are your kids now? Uh, my oldest, Rachel, is 19. She's off at college. Oh, wow. She's in her Aww. sophomore year of college. And then I have uh, twins that are 15, uh, Adam and Sarah, and they are sophomores in high school. Oh, wow. So we can recommend some games for you. Yeah, we yes. can. Yes. Because we also have a board game yes. title, everybody. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we love Quacks um, of Quinlanburg. Great game. Perfect game. Perfect game. Okay, well, Perfect I, game. I, I, offline, I will collect. Anyway, I will yeah. collect. we'll tell you later. Okay. Uh, what is the most enjoyable part about designing a set, and what is... The most frustrating part of the boat designing a set. Okay, um, the most enjoyable part is watching the audience enjoy it. That is by far the most fun. Yeah. That I mean, one of the things that I don't know if you guys realize is whenever we we put a set out, you know, whenever preview start, R and D is just like reading all the. We, we want to see what people have to say, and it's it's a lot of like you work on something and slave on something for a long time, sometimes ten years, and so when it finally <laughs> comes out, you want you want to see the reaction of people. Like, okay, yeah. what are people going to say? That's the most fun, just seeing the reaction. Um, you get to feel really vindicated when people love the fairy tales. Right. So, the hardest part, which is funny, I, I'm writing an article about this right now. Oh, wow. Um, so you guys will scoop my article, because you guys Excellent. are coming to oh. my article. Um, I think the hardest part of my job is, part of the job of, of the head designer is, I'm supposed to pave new way. We haven't done this before, but let's do thing X. Yeah. And kind of the way the system is set up is, the rest of R&D is like, supposed to make sure that the ideas are good. But there's a lot of what I call rolling the boulder up the hill in my job, which is, I think fairy tales would be a good idea. Yeah. And I pitch it, and no, 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 and I have to like keep reinventing and trying and doing mm -hmm. something, and it takes a long time to get something like that done. So like, I'm, I'm happy Eldrin happened, but it was 10 years of me, like little by little pushing the boulder up the hill, and it kept rolling back down, and like that is very tiring. But I'm not just doing one boulder, I'm doing like many, many boulders where like, no, 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 look, we should do a fairy tale set. No, 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 double face cards are a good idea. No, 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 hybrid mana, yeah, it's really good. No, 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 a guild system will work, a guild system's awesome. No, 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 like, and, yeah. and just, like the amount of things in which I had to fight for them, you know, and that's the hard part is, it is very emotionally draining to like constantly being fighting to make things happen. And the reason when sets come out and I'm like, I tell the story of the, the 10 years of trying to get the fairy tale set made is, I had to spend 10 years trying to get a fairy tale set made. <laughs> like, that's why I tell the story, because like I had a, you know, like that's frustrating. Like that, that's 10 years of like trying to do something and it yeah. not happening. And meanwhile, while that is going on, like literally, I went to pitch one day uh, the fairy tale set for like the third time. I, I, you know, I did a slideshow on this and that. They say no, and then the same day I find out that Unstable gets pushed back for the third time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The, the set that I was working on for seven years because it kept getting pushed back, and like that was the same day. It's like no, no, what happened? No, sorry, I was telling Megan oh. to, to not do this. I hear oh. her leg somehow. I don't know how. Oh, I don't know what that is. That's um, not me. Oh, it's not you going like bouncing your leg. Oh, maybe happen. it was. I don't <laughs> okay. know. Okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, sorry. That, so one of the, the hardest part about my job is that while it is a very cool story after the fact to say, hey, I made split cards and no one but me, me and Bill Rose wanted to do them and we had to fight the entire company to make it happen. <laughs> it's another thing to actually have to do that. Yeah. That, that, is yeah. Not, that is not actually fun to do and a lot of my job is doing that. And so... Do you need um, um, Megan and I to be hired as your professional cheerleaders to come in behind you? Yeah. Oh, that yes, would be awesome. Yes, yes. Very nice I think set. it's a good idea. What do you think, Maria? Uh, yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm on board 100%, and I really want you to get behind my idea in exchange for, for your so, idea, which is the Blind Eternity set. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to tell a little story about an upcoming thing. Okay. That I, I, I'll be vague since it's okay, an upcoming thing. great. But 
there is something that I really wanted to do, and I fought a long time to have it, and I finally had to do it, and it came out, and the audience loved it. Great. And there's a different thing I'd wanted to do for a long time, and I fought and tried to get the audience to do it, and I finally did it, and the audience loved it. So in the future, I said, what if we marry these two things and took this thing that people, that everyone was skeptical about, but the audience loved it, and this thing that everyone was skeptical about, but the audience loved it, and put them together. Now I'm wow. wondering what and be. they said, no, they would hate that, and I had to fight to make that happen. And I'm like, I can't even take the things I've proven are good yeah. and combine them together. <laughs> no, I have to fight for those as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly fighting to make things, even things that I, I feel like I'm over the hill. Like, I've done it. I've proven this is good. Oh, well, you're, you're mixing that with, it's kind of like I'm making a recipe, and I'm like, well, this time I'm going to take this and mix it with that. Like, oh, oh, that's a completely different yeah. recipe. And I'm like, like, wait, hear me out. <laughs> Butter, flour, sugar, and everyone's like, what? Whoa, no. no. Yeah. We no, like no, sugar. No. We like butter. But yeah. putting yes. them together, get out. We like cake, but. Yeah. If this is a cookie situation, I so don't know. So that makes me uh, want to ask you, yeah. have you have you done something and you fought for it and fought for it and you loved it and mm. then the audience hated it? I've not had, I mean, I, I, I've had things that- Or didn't that, like it or whatever. Um, I've never fought, as, like the stuff that I fight very hard for, I do not fight for things unless I really, like in my core, believe it's going to be popular. And I've, I've had nothing that hasn't, I mean, at best, I've, I've had stuff that like merely went over well. Yeah. I, I mean, not everything I fought tooth and nail for has been blockbuster and you know people screaming from the roofs. But no, I, I don't tend to fight. Like, I don't fight for things unless I really, really believe the audience is going to like them. And you think um, that that you generally have a good read on that? Yeah, I have a very good read on that. Like one of the things is the reason I'm on the internet all the time and I answer questions and I do a lot of the interface with the audience is a I, I like interface with the audience, but b I'm trying to understand what the audience wants. And one of the reasons I clock in so much time doing that is I really need to understand what do I think people will like. Because I have to fight for the things that I think the players will like. And a lot of that comes from the osmosis of doing it. Plus, I've done the job a lot. But today, today is my 24th anniversary. Yeah, <gasps> wow, so, congratulations. Yeah. That's so, awesome. We um, planned it, of course. So anyway, I've done this a long time. So I mean, I, I have a pretty good sense of what the audience will and won't like. Yeah. Um, like I said, I fought for fairy tale because I it wasn't like I liked fairy tales. It, I mean, I do like fairy tales, but it wasn't. It wasn't like my thing is like, oh, yeah. I personally would just think this would be fun. Like I, I'm past the point where I'm fighting for me because yeah, I, I get to do stuff I like all the time. It's like I I believe the audience would really like this, and the, as you were saying exactly, is I want to push what magic can be. I want to push the boundaries of what magic yeah. can be. And one of the boundaries that I've been pushing on recently is, look, we're we're trying to get a wider audience. That means we have to push it, like. Yeah, we can do, you know, badass monsters and stuff, and we'll do that. Magic does that. But we can be more than that, you know? And, like, I guess we can be sillier. We can be more lyrical. We can be, you know... Yeah. There are people that, like... There are people, for example, that I, I look at Throne Elder and go, oh, I can make a fun deck that is not badass, but just, you know... Yeah. I can, I, and I think that's awesome. And I think that if you want to make a set full of, of, of snarling monsters, yeah, we, we, we give that to you. <laughs> you want to do vampires or werewolves or whatever, great, we can do that. Yeah. But if you want to do fairies or squirrels or whatever, I want you to be, I mean, yeah. squirrels I'm working on, but I, I want you to be able to do that. I, I think it's fun. The reason I'm a bit advocate squirrels. of the unsets is, I mean, the unsets to me have been the poster child of Magic is fun. It's fun. Have fun playing it. <laughs> Why are you playing it? <laughs> is it because it's fun? Yeah, and, and, and the other that's really are me saying, look, like to the, to the to everybody is like, yes, there's a competitive side of Magic. You mm -hmm. can really play Magic for for on the big stage with lots of money and be very serious about every decision you make. And yes, you can do that. That's that's great. But you also can just play Magic where it's goofy and fun, and it's like, it's not really about winning or losing, it's about hanging with my friends and having a good time and having to laugh and telling stories. And like, yeah. one of the things I build into unsets is they're high variance. Like, yeah. if you are a top level pro, pro you're gonna lose more of unsets than normal, because, <laughs> hey, are you good at throwing cards? Or are you good, you're like, yeah. there's just a lot of, or outside assistance, I'm going to get somebody to ask them something, and you ask the wrong person about squirrels? You yeah. might. You shouldn't have. I was right there. I was right there. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I don't thing. think. I mean, don't worry. <laughs> I did not ask the wrong person about squirrels. Did you ask the wrong person for high fives? You no, better you not. You did have. ask the wrong squirrel person. You did. I On did. Camera. Yes. You don't remember this? Who did you, I ask? You asked somebody who hadn't been asked yet about do you like squirrels, and they're like, no, personally, I don't like squirrels. Wow. I and believe you, that that happened. You happens. didn't get your squirrel. You don't remember no. this? No. This was in the pre-pre-release front stable. No. So we were all in the pre-pre-release. Yeah, pre that was great. Um. Oh, uh, that, was my, that was not my highlight, by the way. My highlight of that event was playing with um, Wedge 
in the sub the game. Sub game. That's the, the, right. The, that so the two headed cool. Saharazad sub game. That was awesome. Oh, if you know. haven't watched that, that is a great go find that clip. Go, go get it. It was excellent. Go get yes. it. Okay, everybody, uh, we're uh, going to play something super fun with Mark, movie pitches for Flavor Text Theater. That's right. So you're going to have to, you know, think back to what if you had stayed on that on that TV show track. I'm just going to imagine that you worked for Buffy now because yep. I just love that idea <laughs> that, so much. It's great. Megan and I did a whole uh, watch of Buffy, the entire thing, start to finish yeah. a few years ago. Oh, very cool. So what's going to happen is we're cracking this pack of Throne of Eldraine. We're going to pick okay. a card. If you really hate it, you can throw it back. Um, but we are going to pitch... A movie or a TV series based on the card, the art, somehow the flavor, and I think you, you know, have had great experience with this. So yes, we did play this last time I was on. Yes, we did. Yep. Okay, so uh, who wants to go first? Um, I can start. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is this is a, like a spooky film um, about a Ooh, town Halloween. that is being terrorized um, by by monsters, and they find out like you know it opens and like the first couple of minutes are like all of these different monster attacks, people dying because of monsters, um, and then finally one one person discovers like oh it's because it's not quite like zombies or vampires rising from the grave, but it's like people who have died are undergoing some sort of wild transformation once they've been buried and they bust out of their graves and they're these giant monsters that attack people cool. and create more monsters. Um, and so they go through a whole bunch of things like, how are we going to contain these monsters? Like, what do you do? Like, back in the day, you could stake a vampire to make sure that it was dead. Um, zombies, you know, you, you... I don't know what you do to a zombie. You cut off its legs so it can't chase you anymore. Oh, the lights Great. just turned off anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, keep talking. Uh, maybe they're on a timer. Anyway, so they're like, what is this one? Oh, wait. And finally, one person is like, Oh, you're, oh, moving. They you're, sorry. you're, you're moving, turn them on. Yes. Oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. Uh, and so they're like, hey, uh, we can if we bury them in a glass casket, which is the name oh, of the film. Oh, I get it. Then the monsters stay dead. <laughs> And so this this town starts burying people in glass caskets because somehow it contains the monstrousness. It's creepy. And they can't get out of it. But then obviously, towards the end of the film, it ends with a person taking a stroll to the graveyard, and all of a sudden, they're getting all caught up because there are shards of broken glass. Because <gasps> the monsters found a way to get out of their glass caskets. Great. Oh, I assume there were some that went out and started kissing them. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. Okay. So my story, my my movie. Okay, let's go. Is there's a new sensation that there's these little figurines uh -huh. that are the most lifelike thing you've ever seen, and that they actually they move. This is like Twilight Ooh, Zone. Okay. I like it. And yeah. people are fascinated that there's all sorts of different ones, and they're, they're just like the detail work is so amazing. Mm -hmm. And you got to like um, collect all of them. Anyway, you got to collect. You got to collect them, but yeah. they, but each one is individual and different. So it's like you can't, like when you go see your friends, they have, their little figurine is not like the one that you have. This is creepy. This is cool. And then you find out, and the weird thing is when you play with little things, the way they're, they're programmed is they don't know who they are. And that they're, they're, they're sort of, they sort of have a look, but like each one of them has this sort of like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like and it, sentient? Well, well, they tell you they're programmed, but then you come to learn that they're not programmed at all. Oh. They're actually people that have been shrunk and their memory waste. And they're selling actual little people. So my, This is my, Twilight Zone. Yes, it my, is. My movie is called So Tiny. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Honestly, that is for real. That is for real creepy. That is great. I yep. love that. Yep, yep, yep. OK, my film um, is told from the perspective of somebody who um, is guarding a prison. Um, but it's like a really creepy back in, I don't know, back in time. Well, wait, no, hold on. I love post-apocalyptic hellscape, so this is in the future, um, and it's terrible. <laughs> who, who doesn't love post-apocalyptic oh, hellscape? Yeah, because you're heading towards one, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's like an all-white room, and the guard is wearing all right, white, and they've got a red buzzer they can press to like shut the person up in the cell or whatever. It takes away the power to speak. It's like super creepy towns, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is like Clockwork Orange vibes, is what mm -hmm. I'm going for here. Okay. And it's from their their life, and they get up in the morning, they take their sad shower in their all white room. They exit, they walk down a blue hallway, they get into their you know, job as a guard. And one day they have a new prisoner who forces them to like, you know, talk about their life and like, hey, have you ever thought about like that there's more out here? This is obviously a political prisoner or whatever who's been mm -hmm. protesting. 
And uh, the guard's just like, I just never thought about it. It's, this has always been my life. You know, I was raised to be a guard, and here I am being a guard. And they start this relationship, but for the first time, this guard is, you know, like, yeah, maybe I'm doing something terrible, and maybe there is something better out there, and uh, basically works with the prisoner to escape, uh, but in the end finds out that, um, this is the twist, sorry everybody, I'm spoiling, I'm spoiling it, they used to be the prisoner, the political prisoner, and now they are the guard. Oh. Um, and they don't escape, obviously. What? Wicked guardian. <gasps> oh, okay. So you're telling me that, like, uh, uh, the guy, the person who thought that they were a guard was actually also a prisoner. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Meta. Very meta. Nice. <laughs> I think that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. I mean, anyway. not now that you ruined the twist. For <laughs> yeah, everybody. I ruined the twist. I ruined the twist. Um. Oh, we're doing. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. This is this is a uh, this is a classic. You know, old school, old school. Um, like two warring peoples. Story. Okay. So there, we'll say that they're on, um, like, there's the people who live, like, upslope on the mountain, and there's the people who mm -hmm. live, like, down in the valley. They've been at war with each other for oh, forever. Yeah. Um, because the people down in the valley have, like, all of the beautiful farmland. Um, but the people up on the mountain are always, like, can cause avalanches and stuff like mm -hmm. that, pushing stuff down onto them. Rude. Um, so they're at odds uh, until finally there's one time when like an avalanche wipes out all, like all of the farmland in the valley, um, and most of the people in the two groups are like mad at each other and are like, "We're gonna go fight about it." Um, but one person from each of them meet up and they're like, "Wait a second! What we really need is to go find some place to live for all of our people that's better that doesn't have like this instability and that doesn't have." this like food scarcity so let's go on a great little journey to go find our people a new place to live all Aww. together it's called improbable alliance oh that's Aww. cute i would watch that okay what do you got my movie is about a brand new reality show <laughs> cutting edge okay wait it's a movie about a reality it's show a movie it's a about, movie about a reality show brand new okay, reality show perfect um i don't think we can actually do this reality show because there's a movie about it <laughs> okay so the reality show is they people sign up, thrill seekers, people that really want to do dangerous things. Yeah. And then they give them a challenge that's so dangerous that not all of them will survive. Okay. Okay. Into it. So the idea is, Sick. you know, we're going to jump out of a plane and then after toss you a parachute. And then you have to figure out to get to the parachute, open it up, and land. And not everybody's going to survive that. But whoever survives goes to the next challenge. And they have another challenge. And you keep going until only one person survives. Oh. And they are the ultimate champion. Ultimate champion. Um, but what happens along the way is two people fall in love. Classic. Oh, yep. And they both desperately need the money, though. They definitely they need to win, but they can't win as long as the other's still alive. And I call this thrill of possibility. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Into it. Into Great it. title. I was not seeing that coming. I'm like, which no. card is this? <laughs> well, that, that's my favorite. Uh, this game for the audience is trying to figure out what, what the yes, card yeah. is. What the card is. So. Okay, so this movie is, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, back in like medieval times and there is a magical seer who lives on top of a mountain. And if you go up there and consult the seer, uh, the seer can tell you one, this is like what we, <laughs> our last episode where we talked about scrying one thing in your life, mm -hmm. like if you could scry to the top or to the yeah. bottom. Um, this can tell you something very mundane about your life, and you can get a little, you can get a little, little, little image of it. Like, oh, tomorrow you will be walking down a path, and you will uh, come across a turtle or something like that. <laughs> um, and then you can choose to either do that or not do that, scrying it to the top or to the bottom of uh -huh. your life. So you don't come across a turtle, and instead you come across a rabbit. But what you don't know is that this prophet, whatever you decide, if you decide not to have it happen in your life, it happens to them instead. Ooh. And so, like, if you're like, oh, no, uh, I, I, I'm not going to eat that sandwich or whatever, the prophet's like, oh, now I have to eat that sandwich tomorrow. <laughs> and it's just such a burden, like, that the prophet has stopped doing this. And, like, so I'm many not gonna, sandwiches. I'm not going to eat all these people's sandwiches. I'm not going to come across all these people's turtles. I'm just sick of it. I want to live my own life for once. Yeah. But, they, you know, people keep coming up, and they can't control it, and they keep mm -hmm. trying to, to put upon this poor seer. Um, who has to deal with all of these people's lives and is in kind of living other people's lives and for once wants to try to live their own. But can they? Or have they been using other people's lives as a crutch this whole time? As, uh, you know, to escape their own in profit of the peak. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Peeking into they're the peaking. future. They're peeking. Oh, they're peaking. 
Um, okay. Okay, one more. So one this more. one is, um, we see, it's like a contemporary street in mm-hmm. a city with a, with a lot of homes on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them is like super wildly overgrown. The garden is like huge, like all of these tangles of plants and like a little path that leads into it. Mm-hmm. And obviously there's like a big, like a beautiful like wrought iron fence around it. And you can't even see the house behind all of this. And so finally, um, there's like one night a bunch of, you know, up to no good teens um, are just like, we're going to, we're going to burn down. Oops. Oh, we dropped it. Thank you. Uh, we're going to burn down this garden. Okay. Um, we want to see the house that's behind, like what's going on in there. Um, and so they set, they set fire to it, but obviously it gets really huge and they're like, oh God. And so they run away. And, but they never hear like sirens or anything and they come back the next day and it's as though it never even happened. Whoa. Like the garden is still just standing there. Um, and so finally one of the kids is like, I'm just gonna go in there, like I'm gonna find out. And they walk in and a couple of minutes later they walk out and all their friends are like, what did you see? And their friend seems kind of like disoriented and is acting kind of strangely. Um, and they're just like, oh, it was just like, it's an abandoned house back there. Like, no one lives there. It's fine. Um, but they seem kind of, like, distant. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of the other kids, like, over the next couple of weeks, you see them, um, having all of these, like, weird encounters. Things like, they'll, they'll wake up and they'll have, like, trailing vines have grown in through their windows that are trying to, like, strangle them. Um, and, like, when they're walking down the street, like, plants will reach out and try and trip them or, like, trees will drop down. And it's kind of like whatever those movies are where people are going to die because they're meant to die. Like, they escape uh, their Final death, destination. Final destination. Um, where all these close calls keep happening. And then finally, all of these kids end up one by one, like a tree falls on their car. Um, or plant they, based murder. It's all plant. They all get plant based murder <laughs> until it's just the one kid that walked into the house. Mm-hmm. And you see a flashback of the day that they walked in. And they walked in, and there was a very old woman there, and all of her plants encircled, like cocooned them both. And she took over the body of the teen in Lash of Thorns. Oh, sick. <laughs> I like our creepy movies today. They're okay. very creepy. I got a comedy. Okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Kind of like cl- cleanser. Okay. So what happens is the movie begins, we're in like Nepal or somewhere, uh, and somebody is, is investigating some area they've never been to before, icy, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they come across a 12 foot tall man. Okay. Okay. This giant, this giant man, something they've never seen, and that um, clearly, like they, they try to communicate with him, and they're eventually able to start to get some communication. They don't know where he's from, but he's he's huge. You know, way way taller yeah. than a normal person. Okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> we we, we uh, pick up. There's a a, a a tech billionaire who has bought a, a sports team because he had always <laughs> wanted to own a sports team, and Perfect. so Great. he bought this basketball team. Uh, it's, it's his favorite team, his home team when, when he grew up. But yeah. they're horrible. They're the bottom, you know, they're, they're like the worst team out there. Yeah. But, you know, he's got some money. And so when he learns about this man, this giant man, he hires him and says, I want him on my team. And they try to stop him, be like, where's the rule that says I can't have a person on my team? You know, there's no height required, there's no limitation. Yeah. yeah. And so they get him on the team. And this guy doesn't know basketball or doesn't know anything. They got to train him. But little by little, the crowd gets behind him, and he really becomes sort of this, yeah. this this mascot of the team. And in the end, what they learn is it's not about winning; it's about you know becoming who you are. And the the tech billionaire and the giant bond, and really become friends. And the tech billionaire <laughs> becomes a better person through this experience. Yeah, yeah it's of called course. giant opportunity. <laughs> yes, Yay. I would watch that movie. That sounds great. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, my last movie, we're going back into the horror genre, uh, which is my favorite genre. And it's a bunch of kids going up to the cabin for the weekend, you know, mm-hmm. like in the woods. We're going on up, and it's all the stereotypes from every horror movie. They're going there. But what they don't realize <laughs> when they get there is that the horror theme of this movie is food. <laughs> and Plants, the, food. I, I, I mean, it, okay. it's all coming back to Throne of El Drain. And uh, slowly, they each start turning into their biggest food vice within this, you know, cabin. So, like, one person's turning into a bag of potato chips. One person's <laughs> turning into some Mountain Dew, like the cool mm-hmm. s- the skater boy. Uh, now we know the two things you've turned into. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I'm a big bowl of popcorn or whatever, uh, and they and they all die by being eaten, um, you know, from somebody consu consumed in their food forms in gingerbread cabins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get spooked. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we had some I think real we had some winners. Really solid films okay. there. Yeah, yeah. The Hoffman is Hollywood mixed up based on this. this happened. Um, you know what? They haven't called us yet. They haven't called us yet. We are waiting every day. Yeah. Okay. By the phone. We believe that one of these is it. There is a giant opportunity for you, Hollywood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, yes. I legit think we have come up with some really good ideas in this yes. game. Like <laughs> Obviously over the we years, have. like how many would you say where you're like these are actually good? I mean, but yeah, between the the two of us, like probably like a solid dozen. Yeah, I would. I would agree. We've made hundreds of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a solid dozen in there that are something. And you know what? I'm okay with that race. Yeah, exactly. That seems about right. <laughs> Ultra Pro. Yay, Ultra Pro is so awesome. They make so many great products for magic. If you yes. need the best kind of deck boxes, sleeves, anything containing the most current magic art. I know, speaking of superheroes, which you will in this episode, they have a new Wonder Woman play mat, which is yeah. really cool which you can check out uh, if you follow them on Twitter. Um, just basically so, anything. It's such a wide swath of things that you can get. All of your intersecting hobbies yeah. and things that you love. <laughs> Ultra Pro is a great place to get all of the gear that you need for your magic life. Yeah, so thank you to them for being a sponsor of our show. You can find their stuff on ultrapro.com or cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. They sell a lot of awesome Ultra Pro stuff too. So before we go, Megan and I are going to ask our own personal questions okay. yeah. uh, to Mark Rose out of here. Okay. So mine is, you know, you talk a lot about pushing magic in certain directions and stuff. Yeah. Um, I am a huge fan of, like, thinking outside the box about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. For you, is there ever something that you're like, I would love to push it this far, mm -hmm. but I don't think that they would allow me to? Like, push the design or the way that um, you play the game to a place that you think personally is super cool but you think maybe they'll never let it happen. I, I believe if I had soul, you know, I was King Puba of, yeah. of magic, um, I would have a lot more humor. I, I think magic, I would push magic. I mean, I'm not saying every set would be like the unsets, but yeah. I believe that we could be more humorous. I, I think we are not, we are a little afraid of, of, of being of being a little on the humor. I mean, we do do some humor, but I, I think we could be more. And if I was, if I had total control, I, I would push us more toward having more humor in the game. Yeah, I think that that is something that I argue for a lot on the show, so I'm happy to be hired on as your cheerleader here for that. Well, I'm going to hire you as my cheerleader. That's okay, a good idea. Great. Yeah, yeah um, like I want to see a planeswalker that's like a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> tell me more. Uh, you know, like, uh, I mean, um, like a silly, like a creature, like like a lot of people are saying, oh, like Fibblethip as a planeswalker or whatever. Yeah. I mean, um, like a slippery boggle, like a weird, creepy, like, um, um, and I know it kind of doesn't like make sense. Like a non-humanoid? Like a non, like I know you got this question, like, yes. we have so many non-humanoids. <laughs> but what I mean is like uh, an animal, something that yes. is outside of the range of like what we normally think of as a planeswalker, yeah. which yeah. is a sentient, walking, talking person. Like a squirrel, yeah. that, but that doesn't have the power of human speech. Right, right, exactly. It's just... <laughs> A squirrel, it's just a squirrel that can also he, he gathers nuts on Innistrad and he buries them on Zendikar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like something okay. like that. Here's my question: What if there? Not for you, but I'm just saying in this scenario. Yeah. What if there are like planeswalkers like that, but because they can't talk to people, we don't have Nobody the knows. we don't have the ability to know their stories. There are squirrels. Maybe there are planeswalking squirrels. Yeah. But like no one's walking around talking to these squirrels because I mean, they like, don't talk like people. What so. if it was like a giant? Uh, eye, you know, or what? Like a, <laughs> like this is what I'm talking about. This yeah. is how far I'm pushing it. There's a yes. giant eye, and like it, it does weird stuff, like scrying and whatever. And so it's not exactly what we think of as a planeswalker, but it has the cool abilities uh, that are a little bit different. And uh, <laughs> like my my commander is this giant eyeball. Like that's cool to me. Anyway. What? <laughs> So she wants to be a planeswalker that you can play as your commander. That just, well, that, that, that just, you want just an eyeball. Like that's what you're I'm looking saying, for like, as, as a planeswalker. Conceptually, this is what this is that fits within my my requirements. Do you think like like the Eldrazi? That's I think that's getting closer. Yeah. 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 Something weird like that, you know. Okay, but you want now to now the uh, blind attorney makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your question, Megan? Um, my question is, like, what superhero are you? What superhero am I? Yeah, what's, yeah. what's your I'm power? Very, I'm very serious into superhero, so that is... Uh, yeah, so I know. What, when you say what superhero, what 
if I related to an existing superhero or if I had my own superpower? Like what, what? Let's do one of each. Like, what's okay. your what's your existing superhero that you are? That I that I am. Yeah. Um, like for instance, I'm Squirrel Girl. Oh, uh, I see. I see. Um, yeah. I think my I I have a. I have a work superpower and I have a home superpower. Okay. So my work superpower is um, I'm very good at seeing what people might like that doesn't exist. Yeah. I'm very good at sort of seeing the future. Like, like one of the things about my job, which is really hard, is seeing something that people want that doesn't exist and then convincing other people that that thing's a good thing. Um, but that, I'm very, very good at sort of seeing the thing that doesn't exist and knowing that that's something people would like. Yeah. That's my, like, work superpower. My home superpower is... I have an uncanny sense to judge space. So like whenever we have to pack something or load something, <laughs> I can I can fit a crazy amount of things in a space. My, 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 whenever like we have to do something, my wife goes, okay, make it work. And then I'll, sh it's like a puzzle or something. And yeah. I will, anyway. I Unrelated good... follow-up, can you repack my suitcase before I fly out today? I can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great, great, great. Perfect, perfect. Um, it was it a two-part question? Yeah, oh, that okay. was the one where you told us, you like, and then, yeah, what is a superhero who exists that you're like, if you had to pick a superhero to be? In oh, the to, canon to, to of be? superheroes, which one are you? Um, I mean, one of the things is the, a lot of the super, superheroes I admire are people who really um, kind of, like, they understand who they are and they, they really embrace, like, I... I love superheroes that embrace that they're super, like there's a lot of superheroes that like fight it or like have this all this angst about it. and I'm like, I want to be a superhero that really enjoys being a superhero. Yeah. Um, like there's a superhero on DC called Booster Gold. Yeah. And the whole idea of Booster, Booster Gold, Gold, I mean, uh, Booster Gold also was very into like marketing himself, but like, just the idea of like, <laughs> like you know what the most awesome thing in the world to be is to be a superhero. Yeah. Uh, that, that is, I would really enjoy being, I would, I would embrace it and enjoy it and not like have lots of angst. So. All right, fair enough. Great answer. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being our guest on this episode. It's always yeah. awesome to have you here. Yes. I, I know the listeners love it as well. So uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and hanging out with us and Mark. And uh, I'm yeah. super pumped for the monster set coming up. Okay. So how do you say it? Ikoria? I Ikoria. Yeah. Ikoria? Uh, I think it's Ikoria. Ikoria, yeah. That... I am... I'm, I'm so excited to go back to Theros. Yeah, Theros. Theros. So Ikoria, by the way, play. Ikoria... Talking about pushing things, the, there is a mechanic, and I, I, I really can't believe we made it. It is so yes. over the top crazy. Um, I, I mean, I'm excited for it, uh, but it definitely is one of those things where sometimes I pitch things and I'm not sure whether the people will do it. And so Dave, Dave uh, Humphreys was the set designer. I pitched something I thought was crazy, and Dave was like, "Maybe we can make it a little crazier." So wow. wow! Anyway, if you like monsters, there's a there's a set uh, coming up that is. Uh, you know, I, I can't talk too much about it yet because we have, yeah. we have that Theros coming first. Yes. But um, 2020 is a good year. And remember February, February 29th, pick up Unsanctioned. Yeah. 16 new cards. You can make decks. Uh, and a lot of reprints of old un cards that you might not own because yeah. some of them are from long ago. So And some new lands, Exciting. too. Oh, yes, and very pretty yeah. lands. Uh, thank you to everyone who makes this episode possible by being a patron of the show. Go over to patreon.com slash glhfmagic to become a patron um, and get in on those sweet hangouts and stuff like that. And also to Card Kingdom and Ultra Pro. Yeah, some super great sponsors. Um, Mark, we're going to end the episode with a triple high five, I think, because okay. that's right. just in the spirit of our show. Okay. All right, ready? One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is it triple high five all at once? I, I thought we were going to go like this. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. One, one, two, three. <laughs> that was that was that was bad. Well, really sure, here's this. what I wanted. This is what I imagined. I imagined we'd all go up, hit together, we'd freeze. The show freezes. The credits roll by oh, or something. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's but, do uh, that. Here we go. Okay, okay, okay. 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 okay.